Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Never Believe What You Hear. Table. Oh, I told you not to slam that door. Yeah, Granddad is asleep in there. Oh, of course, it's Saturday. One o'clock dinner time, half past one snoring time. <laughs> Every Saturday says the same thing. Oh, well, I'll away in just have five minutes. <laughs> then he rattles every window in the street for the next three hours. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Don't be clever. Anyway, where have you been till now? Granddad and I had a dinner half an hour ago. Susan's not here at home either. No, she's waiting for Alfie to pick her up and it'll be late. How do you know? I've just left him running down the road after his motorbike. <laughs> running after his motorbike? Yes. After me and Ozzy got off, he had to push his bike to get it going again. And I held his crash helmet for him. Well, he pushed the bike and as soon as it started, he jumped on. Shouted for his crash helmet, I threw it in the full coat it with both hands. <laughs> and the bike went off and left him standing in the road with his legs bent. <laughs> like the Virginian waiting for his horse. Oh, really, Jimmy, you're a little terror. Now go on, in you go. Have your dinner. There he is. Rip Bang McWinkle. <laughs> the human road drill. <laughs> now for the grub. Which plate has the most ham on? Hmm. Both about the same. Well, um, I'll put a bit of mine on Susan's plate and then sit at her place. <laughs> Hello. We started work on a new road. <laughs> ah, now he's leaning on his shovel. <laughs> hey, up! He's seen the foreman. I'll put you to sleep when I get you outside. Come out of this room. Do you think I'm daft? <laughs> I'm staying here. And if you wake me, Grandad, I'll tell me, ma'am. All through you, Alfie was an hour late. I felt a right fool standing outside the Empire. People kept staring at me. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't go out till it's dark. <laughs> Shut up, you little monster. All right, you, you monster sister. Come here. I mean, I mean, get off me. Well, that's it. Shout. Wake Grandad and see what you'll get. Oh, no, I won't. If anybody wakens him, it could be you. Get off me or I'll pull your hair. You wouldn't dare. Who? You. Me? Yes. What? Dare. Who? You. Me? Yes. Let them all shut up. What was that? Go on. What? Dare. Dare. Dare, 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 do that. <laughs> You've asked for it. Ow! I mean, ow! <laughs> right. Take that. Oh! Oh! Right. I'll get your hair. Oh, let go! Let go! What's going go on? Quiet! Oh. What is this? Don't a man have five minutes peace. No. You've waken me, Grandad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. Jimmy, get out. 
Get out of this room or I'll smack you so hard. You can't get me after the bell. It's a foul. Get out! I'll answer the door, ma'am. Leave it to me. Answer that door and then go through it. Phew. I thought I'd had it there. Oh, that's the danger signal. When a neck goes blotchy. Hello, James. Is your mother in? Yes, Mr. Brocklebank. She's in there. But if you're going in, keep your guard up. All right, father. I- I'm going upstairs. Oh, hello, Mr. Sinclair. Oh, hello, Humphrey. I'll see you later. Pat's in there. But she's in no mood to discuss bidding patterns. Hmm? What's wrong with him today? My man woke him up shouting at our Susan. Oh, dear, and I did want her to be in a good mood. What's wrong, Mr. Brocklebank? Oh, it's something I was organizing for the Good Neighbors League, and Mrs. Billington has let me down because she's not well. What? Is Beaky Billington ill? Oh, it's nothing serious, just a rather badly sprained ankle. What happened? Did she fall off a perch? <laughs> What are you standing there for? He wants to see you. You, um, I mean, oh, hello, Humphrey. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Come in. Jimmy, go out and play before I lose control of myself altogether. I'm going, ma'am. Mr. Brocklebank kept me here telling me about Beaky Billington falling on a parson's nose. <laughs> oh, he's asking for it, that boy. Yes, he is naughty sometimes. Uh, Come in, Humphrey. Now, what's all this about Mrs. Billington? Well, she can't walk now till her ankle gets better. That's why I've come to see you. Hello, Mr. Brocklebank. Oh, hello, Susan. Now, what can I do for you? Well, you know I'm producing a play at the RAF missile base near here. Yes, yes, it's to raise more money for the Good Neighbors League funds, isn't it? Uh, Yes. Well, the commanding officer's wife is keen to help our worthy cause. It was she who requested I uh, mount the production, if you'll forgive the theatrical jargon. (laughs) Yes. Mrs. Billington mentioned it. The uh, CO's wife is appearing in the play, isn't she? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, just the small part, though. I'm afraid she is no actress. <laughs> but, well, she is the commanding officer's wife. Uh, uh, well, what about Mrs. Billington? Is she any good? Well, as you know, she has a clear, distinct voice and a strong personality. But hers wasn't a leading part, but a very important one. But she sprained her ankle and can't appear. Oh, dear. Well, hasn't she got a stand in then? Uh, no, that's why I came round here, Mrs. Clitheroe. I wondered if you'd uh, fill the breach. <laughs> me? Oh, I'm sure you could do it. Oh, no, not me. Well, of course you could, Mother. Go on. We'll all come and see you and cheer. No, I'm afraid it's not for civilians. Oh, well, I don't think I could, Humphrey. Look, at least come along for a few rehearsals and see how you feel. You would be saving the situation for us, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, well, that seems fair enough, Mother. A few rehearsals can't do any harm. Oh, well. All right, then. <laughs> Wonderful. But if I think I can't do it, I'm bucking out. Do whatever you say. And not a word to Father or Mr. Whittle about this. I don't want them pulling my leg. <gasps> and above all, don't mention it to Jimmy. Oh, definitely not. If he knew where you were going, he'd be on that missile base in two seconds, shooting rockets all over the world. Uh, I won't say a word. But the missile base is one place even James couldn't visit. I have to give them a list of all the uh, artists. And when you enter, the RAF police scrutinize you most carefully. Oh, that reminds me. I must ring up and tell them you are replacing Mrs. Billington on the list. What time shall I be there? Oh, well, they're sending a jeep for me this evening, so I'll tell them to collect you first. You know, it's really quite impressive being escorted there by RAF police. Who's been escorted by RAF police? What are you doing in here? I told you to play outside. It's raining, ma'am, pouring down. I'm your son, not a duck. <laughs> oh, all right, Finn, but behave yourself. Of course, ma'am. Hey, Mr. Brocklebank. Why were the RAF police after you? Don't oh, be silly. I was talking about the missile. They don't never mind. Oh, you were in the RAF, weren't you? Yes, doing my national service, but that was years ago. Hey, what were you, a, a bomber pilot? Uh, no, cookhouse assistant. Oh. <laughs> that was a strange job to give someone who's been a clerk all his life in the corporation. Oh, yes, but as it turned out, I became quite a good cook, and still am, according to my sister. Well, how about giving my sister some lessons? Teach her how to cut a sliced loaf. <laughs> Alfie, 
Let's go out for a run on your motorbike. Ah, no. Can't come to take Susan out. And if I go with you, something will go wrong and I'll be out when Susan gets in. And just because she can't see me, she'll think I'm not here, was he? You've been and gone to me. <laughs> oh, you've gone all right. Look, Susan won't be home for hours. She's at a friend's house, Janice's. You can't be daft. She goes to Janice's on a Wednesday. She said we go to the pictures tonight. She told me... Seven o'clock Tuesday, and that's when I got here tonight, ten to seven. On Wednesday. Exactly. Oh, uh, oh, did you mean I should have been here last night? Oh, 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 oh. what will she do? Well, if you're lucky, she might pack you in. <laughs> hey, did you mean that, Susan? Tell her I've gone. I'm, I've not been. I'm, I'm not here, you know. Yeah, you're not all there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, don't be clever. Oh, it's you, Scraggy. You're not my sister. Sister? Why? Do I look like a hair hostess? I mean, I was expecting a girl. Oh, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. According to our medical officer, I'm a man. Oh, we've got a right Air Force One here. <laughs> you are in the RAF, aren't you? That's right, Sonny. Corporal Baxter. Hey, what's you read up for? Are you Russian? Oh, don't worry. I'm just a policeman. Oh, an RAF policeman. Got it. Now, can you tell me if a Mr. Humphrey Brocklebank is in there? His sister said we'd find him here. No, he's just left. Hey, are you after him for something? He, is he a spy? After him? <laughs> oh, yes. He's a desperate character, he is. <laughs> oh, you know him, then. He was a cook in your lot, you know. Uh, yes. I have met him. So have I, and you twit. <laughs> What's he done? Who? Oh, this Brocklebank fella. Will you keep it a secret? Of course. Stand well back and I'll spit me death. He saved 500 lives on his first day as a cook. He did? How? He deserted. <laughs> anyway, never mind that. If you see him, tell him to get in touch with us and tell us where to pick him up. Right. You mean, uh, give himself up? Yeah, that's it, Sonny. Uh, ta -da now. Keep an eye open for him. The deserter. <laughs> what was that, Jim? Yeah, who's the deserter? Mr. Brocklebank. That was an Air Force policeman. They're after him. Mr. Brocklebank? Away. It's true. Hey, mister, what will happen to Mr. Brocklebank when you catch him? Oh, with you, 99 years. He might even get life. <laughs> there you are, Alfie. Well, it seems true, but I, I don't understand. Mr. Brocklebank was only in the RAF for one day and he deserted. The corporal said so. But he never told me mum that. Of course not. I mean, think of the shame, a deserter. Oh, poor Mr. Brocklebank. I, 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 should, should, should we warn him? Yes, get your bike and we'll go around to his house. Yeah, I could phone him. Oh, no, we'll go. And if he doesn't want to run for it, we can watch them arrest him. <laughs> Come in the lounge, James, Alfred. Well, this is a surprise. <laughs> You've got a bigger one to come. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Did they come in for you? Because you weren't here, you were at Jimmy's, but when he got there, you left, so he, he, he couldn't get you, but he will, unless you give yourself up, then he won't need to. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I said they come in for you because you weren't there, you were at Jimmy's, but... but, 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 but Shut up! <laughs> one of these days, you'll tie your tongue in a knot. <laughs> now we came to warn him about the police. Oh, dear. Do you mean they were looking for me? No, this fellow was telling us what you did in the Air Force. Oh, I did nothing. Yeah, that's what he told us. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, just excuse me for a moment while I answer the phone. Mr. Brocklebank, don't be long. You haven't got much time if you want to run away to South America. I don't understand, James. I, I won't be a moment. Hello? Yes? Humphrey Brocklebank speaking. Oh, it's you, Corporal Baxter. <laughs> Humphrey, it's the copper from the Air Force. Uh, yes, Corporal, my sister told me you'd been to pick me up. You knew you were after him. Yes, I was at Mrs. Clitheroe's, but I must have left just before you got there. But well, I'm very sorry about it all. <laughs> You'll be a lot sorry when they get him in the greenhouse. <laughs> Prison. Yes, I'll wait here until you come for me. He's giving himself up. <laughs> Yes, but before you come here, I want you to call and pick up Mrs. Clitheroe. Have you got me, ma'am? Well, no, you wouldn't, know. Uh, Mrs. Billington? Well, no, that's why I want you to get Mrs. Clitheroe. Yes, she's in it now. I was just... What does he mean, Jimmy? She's in it. 
Uh, that's right. But as you know, I am accused of the crime. But it's a woman who is really to blame. Yes, well, Mrs. Clivero is the criminal. Did you hear that, Alfie? <laughs> I'm dead. It's hard to blame him over there. I'll murder him. I'll, I'll, I'll get your bicycle pump and blow his brains out. <laughs> no, go right on with her. Let's go back to your house and warn your mum. She, she wants to get a lawyer before they pick her up. <laughs> You're right. Come on. And then we'll come back to see Mr. Brockerbank. And if the police haven't picked him up, I will. Every time you knock him down. <laughs> Quicker on a pair of roller skates with square wheels. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I back them down my chain going. If we're too late, it won't be a chain. It'll be a big end. Oh, hey, shut up. We're lucky we got here at all. We might have had a nasty accident. You still might have. If they pick me, ma'am, up. Come on. Oh, steady there. Steady, Jimmy. Where's the fire? Oh, sorry, Mr. Johnson. I'm in a hurry to see me, ma'am. Oh, well, you'll have to run a bit. I saw her drive away not two minutes ago in a jeep. But you haven't got a driving license. She'll get into the jeep. Come on, wrap your chain round your neck. Mr. Johnson, was it an Air Force jeep with the police in? Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> What's she been up to? <laughs> Stealing a rocket? <laughs> Very funny. Alfie, come on, back on your bike. What, Pa? We're going to the Rose and Crown. Oh, well, I could do with a shandy, I thought. Aye, you're too young to be in a pub. You're too daft to be in the human race, but you're here. <laughs> I'm going to tell me granddad what's happened. At least you are. I'll wait outside. Oh, I see. Well, wait till I kick the start, eh? Get it down, I'll pump. And if the bike doesn't start, I'll try kicking you. <laughs> Here, Pete. A pint to the best for you, and a half a ditto for me. I'm ready for this. If you took long enough, have you been making a date with a new barmaid? You what? Make a date with Snooty Sarah? <laughs> she turns her nose up that much, she could play hoop lad on it. <laughs> oh, she's not so bad. Uh, well, she's too jolly up for my liking. You know, on her eyes, that cascara. <laughs> Done up in that buffoon style. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I found it, lad. I tried the other bar and it was so full of it, so I pushed to the front to see, and then off the fellow's arm, filled his beer, wet his pal, and said, I'm sorry, I have one on me. He, he said, Thanks, and emptied his glass over my head, so I had to buy him another time. <laughs> You've taken her away in a jeep. <laughs> oh, I see. They've taken who away? Well, whoever it was, they'll be coming back for Alfie. <laughs> Deserted. I've never been in. No, but it won't blow before you are. <laughs> Look, Alfie, have a drink. Oh, no, I, I don't think so, thank you. Oh, come on, Alfie, a quick shandy. Oh, all right, then I am thirsty. Good. Uh, half a shandy, please, gorgeous. No, then, Alfie. What were you saying? Oh, I, I was telling you about the other bar. This big fella grabbed me out. Get, oh, I forgot. Listen, no, I came to tell you, they've taken her away. Oh, don't start again. Alfie, you're definitely in need of psychiatrical treatment. <laughs> you're mentally defunct. <laughs> Jimmy, get out of here. What do you think you're doing? I've been waiting for Joe 90 there. <laughs> Came in for two seconds, ten minutes ago. Well, we don't say them. Now, go on, go on. Oh, Grandad, if we don't hurry, she'll be in prison. Didn't Alfie tell you? They've taken her away. Oh. Not you as well, Jim. It's an epidemic. But they have. Mr. Brockerbank told them it was her. She's the criminal. Who is? Mrs. Clithero. What do you mean, Pat's a criminal? Mr. Brockerbank told the RAF police she was, and they came and arrested her. What? Is this the truth, my lad? We heard it all, didn't we, Alfie? Yeah, we did, Mr. Sinclair. Cubs on it. I mean, honest. Well, what are we waiting for? This is obviously a case of mistaken identical. 
Let's go after him in my car. You're right. They'll have gone to the airfield. I know. The base for the miscellaneous rockets. Come on. Hey, what have you done, Oh, we don't want it now. Well, I want the money. All right, Jesse Bella. Here. <laughs> Drink it yourself. I'll better still have a shampoo with it. <laughs> Look what it's done for Alfie's hair. Come on, hurry up, or oh, oh, we'll be too late. Just a minute now, you're not going. Oh, Grandad. Alfie, take him home on your bike, will you? Yeah, I am, Mr. Sinclair. He's right, Jim. This will be no place for Junie Viles. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, please. Lead on, close up. No, but come on, Jimmy, I'll take you home. All right, but seeing as it's such a nice night, we'll go the long way. Which is that? Past the missile base. <laughs> Too clear off. Look, my daughter's in there and I'm coming in to get her. And I'm coming with him. So if you want to live to be a sergeant, you'd better disperse yourself. Don't you threaten me, or I'll sort you both out. You're a cheeky young whippersnapper. Listen, Corporal Hitler, just come down off your clothes off before I get me dandy up. <laughs> so why don't you both go home and sleep it off? We're not drunk. But if you don't get out of the way, we're liable to get this orderly. I'm coming in. Now get back. I'm warning you for the last time. Don't you push me. That does it. Show it a man old enough to be your father, wouldn't you? Well, put him up. Come on. Have a go at me, then. I don't want to fight anybody, but I've got a job to do. Ah, oh, you're right. Kidnapping unexpecting females. <laughs> when it comes to a man, that's a different cattle of flesh. <laughs> talking about? If you're not drunk, you must be dark. Oh, no, we're now, now, look, don't let their heart <laughs> Are you sure it's not too cold for you out here, Mrs. Clitheroe? Oh, no, no. This coat's very warm. But officially, we can go back in the officer's nest. No, no, no. I needed some fresh air. Oh, I'm really very sorry for this delay. Oh, it's not your fault that we have to wait for the CEO's wife. <laughs> oh, thank you. It really is most inconsiderate of her to be half an hour late for rehearsal. Well, from what I hear, she's probably giving her husband his orders for tomorrow before he gives them to the airman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think she does tend to wear the commanding officer's trousers. <laughs> yeah, from the look of her, she'll have to let them out a bit. <laughs> oh, now, 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 Mrs. Clitheroe, that's a little unkind. <laughs> True, but unkind. <laughs> there we are, Alfie. Grab him. Get down with you, Jim. Good heavens, it's James and Alfred. Oh, no, he's found out. Jimmy, what are you doing Don't here? Don't worry, Mum, we'll save you. Got you, you squealer. No! Oh, oh, oh. I'll not run away. You'd better explain yourself before I give you a good smack. What? I'll punch your nose for you. Yes, and I'll let you up to do it. <laughs> you needn't bother. I'll kick his shins and stand on the lumps. <laughs> you stop it. Help, ma'am. You hit me. Now, what's this? What's all this trouble about? See what you've done, our ma'am. Now it's... Too late for you to get away. Oh, Alfie, what's he talking about? We wanted to stop him arresting you because you're a criminal. And I mean, because he said so and you're not, but he is and he wants to save his skin and give him yours. Is he that? I think they're both out of their minds. No, 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 just wait till I get you home, Jimmy. I'll sort you out. But, but, but aren't they going to keep you in jail? In jail? What do you mean? Well, we, we heard Mr. Brocklebank tell this bloke to arrest you because you were a criminal. He asked me to pick it up to come to the rehearsal. Rehearsal? I see it all now. James, your mother is playing the part of a criminal in our play. We've come here to rehearse. Oh, heck, and I thought... Oh, dear, my granddad. Oh, thank goodness he's not here yet. You haven't seen him, Corporal. My granddad, Mr. Sinclair. No, I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. Is he Scottish, thick-set, with a temper like a wild Highland bull? Oh, that's him. He's been and gone, has he? He's been, but he hasn't gone. I've got him and another bloke locked in the guardroom. Oh, no. Oh, they're locked up. Well, I didn't realise, Mrs. I'll let them out right away. Alfie, start the bike up. Corporal, 
Don't let the Mount Roger way give us about ten minutes start. <laughs> With the Tudor Kids this week, where Peter Stinkler as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Brian Truman as Mr. Whittle, Colin Edwin as Mr. Brocklebank, and Brian Mosley as Corporal Baxter. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. <laughs> I thought you might be worrying what happened to me. Well, you needn't. I didn't get smacked. Me granddad was in a good mood when he came out, so he just told me off. <laughs> there were four of them in the guard room and a pack of cards. Me granddad won £2.15. <laughs> and he did get a bit cross when I said he ought to give me five bob.